Hello viewers, today I would like to show you how you can run one binary on three processor architectures. So uh, how I did uh, this trick, uh, you can read on Hackaday.io on my project. And uh, in this video, I will try to explain a few hacks and a uh, little bit cheating uh, how you can run a Blink application on free processors. I know uh, very well the internals of uh, AVR, uh, Cortex-M3 microcontrollers and uh, the old uh, X51 MCUs. So I've decided to use this free. So the output uh, will be this uh, binary, uh, which is uh, only 144 bytes long, and it can run uh, the Blinky application on AVR, X51 and ARM microcontroller with some unused space here. So this is how I did this. So let's start with the simplest uh, boot code because uh, AVR and X51 needs some tweaking, uh, but the ARM code is really simple and straightforward. Uh, when the ARM processor boots, ARM Cortex M3, uh, the processor takes a look on the first four bytes, which are a stack pointer. Uh, I don't care what uh, is here right now, so it will be loaded as a stack pointer, but I will change that in my code later. And the second four bytes are uh, is the boot reset vector, and the processor jumps to this address. So this uh, vector just uh, points uh, the Cortex M processor to start running from here. Now let's take a look uh, on this uh, assembly code. So in the beginning, uh, I'm telling the compiler that this is the thumb code. Uh, next, I will define uh, some peripherals and registers for uh, enabling the clock and for accessing the GPIOs. Uh, next, I'm creating a short vector table. This is the stack pointer, which I will ignore. It's just a dummy dummy word in here. And this is uh, what's interesting. It's just it's the reset vector where, uh, which jumps to the application, which is here. Also, I had to do some small uh, handcrafting of this assembly. You can see that I'm moving the code to 40 hex, which is perfectly fine, as you can see in this hex editor. So I'm setting uh, the stack pointer manually because uh, the stack pointer, which is loaded as the first word from the binary, it's actually AVR and x51 instructions so i have to change this stack pointer manually then i will enable the clock for gpoc and then i enable a pin as an output and then i'm uh, writing one making a small delay calling here and then i'm writing zero to the output and i'm looping here and this is uh, the delay function so the ARM part uh, was quite simple. Now let's move uh, to the X51. The X51 boots at address 0 and AVR also boots uh, at address 0. So what I had to do is select this AVR instruction to be handled in X51 code as non-destructive instruction. So uh, F4CF is one instruction in AVR, but it's another instruction in X51. And uh, this F4CF in X51, in X51, so when X51 boots, it will read the first byte and it will decode it as an exchange instruction. This is a completely non-destructive instruction. It will just exchange register a accumulator with R7, then it, because it's a one byte instruc in one byte it's instruction, it will load 
another one, this, f4, and it is a complement a, which is, I think, uh, something like negative or some arithmetic, which I always don't care which, what is in accumulator and what happens to the accumulator. And then the first third byte is actually a two byte instruction, which is my jump instruction, which I a little bit handcrafted here. So let's take a look uh, at the assembly of X51. Okay, this is the simplest and shortest uh, code. So it's uh, again placed at address zero. Uh, here you can see the first two bytes. Uh, these actually don't have to be there because the final binary is completed. It, it's merged from three output binaries. And then this is the short jump instruction to start, which was, which was here, short jump. And uh, this is just toggling the output pin, a simple dummy loop, which is so repeating a few times, and then again toggling the output, which makes the blink LED. Now let's take a look uh, at AVR boot. So the AVR just uh, boots uh, at address zero. It will uh, take a look at the first uh, byte in the flash memory. And if it's a jump instruction, then it will, it will jump somewhere because this is the reset vector for AVR. And here's a small magic because uh, I had to specially choose this one instruction. Uh, if I use uh, relative jump, then it will work for AVR, but it will destroy my non-destructive instruction for X51. So I had to select very, very specifically the instruction which will X51 ignore and AVR will jump to its own code. Okay. So I couldn't use relative jump, I couldn't use relative call. And finally, when uh, I had opened uh, the table of all instructions and I tried all the bit combinations, then I found uh, I can do this instruction, which is, I think, a branch if interrupts are disabled, which is true after the reset of the processor. So this is very, very good uh, instruction. And also I had to spe specially move uh, the beginning of the code because this uh, 10 hex also is modifying this, uh, this instruction. So I had to move uh, this code 10 bytes, uh, 10 bytes hexa to create these two bytes, CF and F4, which are harm harmless instructions for X51. And then it's very simple. It jumps to the main. It will turn the LED pin as the, as the output and it's looping. It sets, uh, clears the pin, makes a little delay, sets the bit, makes a little delay and it will repeat forever. Now well, let's take a look uh, what happens uh, when I compile all these three uh, codes together. First, I will compile them separately. So it will create a binary for uh, Cortex M4. So uh, this, is, uh, this is the reset vector and this is the code for STM F4. The same applies for Arduino or AVR binary here. So this is the BRID instruction, which jumps to the beginning of the code. And then uh, the, here is the x fifty y x fifty one, and this is the output. Yeah, this is the simplest and shortest code. So this is the non-destructive uh, instruction uh, exchange or something, and this is the actual jump to the code, which is here. Then uh, there's the make file, which. Uh, which uh, needs some definitions where the each binary is, then uh, reset vectors, uh, parameters for each uh, arch architecture, 
and where the assembly code is and how long it is. And then I'm using SREC cat uh, command to merge all these three parts together. So uh, these uh, parameters will uh, choose the bits and pieces from each of the binary and it will create uh, one, one big binary and also uh, Intel X file for x51 architecture, I guess. So this is the final binary, which is running on all three architectures. Thank you very much uh, for watching. Uh, if you liked uh, this approach, uh, this uh, little hex, uh, please uh, thumb up the video or uh, share it. It will help and subscription always helps to motivate me for another fun and interesting video. So thank you once again and see you later.